London share prices dropped more than 200 points today with fears of a sharp recession on traders' minds. Small businesses are worried too about a squeeze on their finances from the banks. Their representatives met ministers today and said that they've been given assurances that the banks, backed by the state, will keep money flowing to small companies. But the Bank of England has been outlining its new plans to support the financial system and its message seemed to be that it will remain tough to borrow. Here's our economics correspondent, Faisal Islam. Far away from the plummeting stock markets, ordinary businesses like Cobalt, Blue and Farnham are also concerned that a £2 trillion global bailout, the world's biggest international rescue, isn't working, not yet rescuing them as their overdraft rates continue to surge. For us, um, getting the cost of raising the interest rates is up to 16%, which is nearly the same as a credit card. So it's penalising us a lot. We're you know, getting about £1,500 more a year in terms of being charged for using the same borrowing facility. That concern was carried to business ministers today. The urgent message that state-controlled banks need to be forced to fund small businesses. The era of cheap credit is uh, at its end. But what we, we have got a commitment from the government that they will make an annual statement to Parliament and in effect a report on how the banks have dealt with the situation and whether they're using the money that they've put in in a responsible way. So we've got that commitment, which is very, very good, so we can see whether in fact their track record is living up to the commitments that they may have given to the government. So if they don't do it, you can shame them into it? Well, yes, absolutely, because they are part of the country and we have to all pull together. With a host of banks heading for part nationalisation, the pressure's on from various quarters of the economy, the government to be less arm's length and a more strong arm. Even the terms of the bailout itself, specifically the ban on dividends being paid by banks in receipt of government support, appear to be being weakened as the bank shares were heavily sold by investors. But it's the support of part nationalised banking system can and should give to business and industry that's key. The Bank of England tried to do its bit to free up clogged up money markets today with a radical reform to how it supports banks starting on Monday. This will be a permanent successor to the first attempt to bail out the so-called special liquidity scheme which banks can only use for January. Banks have been stuck holding mortgage-backed securities, huge packages of mortgage debt after the credit crunch halted their trade. Recently they've been allowed to effectively pawn them at the Bank of England in a three-year swap for UK government bonds, much more reliable and so strengthening their financial position. But so far, they could only take in mortgages issued up to the end of 2007, so that facility did nothing to boost current mortgage lending. But now the Bank of England will swap new mortgages onto its books, but only for 30 days. That's the message of the bank's reform paper released today. Imagine that the bank bailout worked perfectly. Even then, an arcane and technical document like this has some fundamental realities. After a month of turmoil in the market, Bergen King and the Bank of England believe that their relationship with the banking system remains the same. That's a black spot. But it isn't some magical fountain of credit ready to restore the levels of mortgage and credit card availability to that for 2007. And that's because parts of the banking system that we think of as not working, they well have changed fundamentally. And that's a structural increase in the price of credit for us all. The FTSE 100 fell dramatically again today, down to a five and a half year low. Fears about recession, about the bailouts not yet kicking in, but at the highest parts of the banking system, there's a growing belief that the free flow of money and unsecured lending between our banks may be permanently lower in this new world. That's going to have a huge impact on the interbank interest rates that are key to setting the price of credit across the economy. Bank of England base rate in January 2007 was 5.25%, while the three-month interbank rate was just over 5.5%, a narrow gap of one-third of a percent. Today, the Bank of England rate is down to 4.5%, while the rate between banks is higher at 6.2%, a margin of nearly 1.7%. And though the gap may close, it's not going to close completely. So a different picture of credit availability from the Bank of England to that suggested by the new part owners of our commercial banks. Now, the Bank of England is owned by the state, but doesn't always do what the government says, because it must remain independent. But now the government's got stakes in other commercial banks, 
like RBS. What today shows is that the political pressure to interfere in them has only just begun. Basil Islam, California News, outside the Bank of England.